So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Now Brady. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. Seven yards, the pick up there. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, What's up, you guys? tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave them with a third and about three to go. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. So opening drive, three straight runs, unable to pick up the first. I know the fans want to see first downs, but guess what? The coaches have reasons for what they're doing. Sometimes they've scripted it. And some of these runs, while they haven't been successful now, they may be successful later on. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return, and it'll be Titan football. Tennessee offense set to go again. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now first down run with Henry that time as he maneuvers forward for about four yards. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Second down, they go again with Henry. It's a five-yard game, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. And this defense going to bring out a couple extra DBs here on third and a yard. Off the option, here's Henry. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now, three plays, all three short runs, but together, a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it could turn into a big game downfield. What a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And finding the tight end, Hooper. He'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Nice job. Nice patience right there. Put him on the right side. Let him work his way across. Put the ball in his hands and let him work his way upfield with a catch. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Now it's Tannehill. And down he goes. A bucket Vita Vea coming right up the gut. Gets in there for a loss of nine. 
But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. Now a throw downfield is taken in by his running back. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 34-yard line. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. On first and ten, Tannehill. That's caught Nick Westbrook Aquino with it. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Back to the ground now, it's Henry. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Let's go. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. Derek Henry. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. Five yards from the end zone, first and goal. Here's Tannehill. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. I think that's how this defense is going to need to play these tight ends. Again, get right up on them and stay physical. And that paid off on that play, helping force that incompletion. A line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. Running from the gun with Henry. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Partner, it's been my experience that after two stops like that near the goal line, defense has only become bolder. They don't back off at all. I think they continue to bring pressure and force them to make a really big play against them. And the incompletion, then the run for no gain. Let's see now. Now Tannehill on third and goal. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. You got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Here's Bullock now for the Titan field goal. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Bullock will put this one through. And the Titans hit the scoreboard first. It's three to nothing. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as we'll get this up to the 29. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. 
they should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out, a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Here's Brady to throw. Looking deep for Julio. Oh, a contested ball here, and it's going to be caught. A big play that time for Tampa Bay. Yes, partner, Julio Jones is just that good. I mean, if it's going to be a type of a jump ball play or a play where you have to go up over people to get it, I like his odds because of his athletic ability and his ability to get up in the air and sky. Julio's real name is Kentoris Lopez Jones, and Kentoris means gladiator. Well, that's exactly how he plays. When you look at him, body type, the fury that he plays the game, the passion, he was aptly named. Give him maybe a yard, quite the opposite from the previous big gainer. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Brady. And he's wrapped up, taken down, back at the 25. Now we'll look at Smith, not sure exactly what happened, but he's still down. We'll check on his status when we get back. The sack backs him up third and long. Tough challenge for Brady in the box. Looking to throw. Brady. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Tight defense there on third down, but what a product of good coaching and even better execution because he realized he's in field goal range, no sense forcing anything, and he made sure he didn't. So Brady departs, and on is Ryan Suckup for the Buccaneer field goal. This from 42 yards out. And Suckup will put this one right through. And that will tie us at 3-3. So good kick there to polish up the drive with three points. Yeah, and coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point, or in this case, a field goal. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them... That's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, 
All I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You talk about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Nice idea, nice concept there. Line him up on the left side of the formation, let him sneak his way across, coming back underneath, put it in his hands, let him get a few more yards after the catch, too. Great way to utilize a tight end on the drag route. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. And this one hauled in. Again, it's Hooper. A gain of six there on first. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. From the 45 on second down, Tannehill. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven-on-seven seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Tannehill throwing again. And he comes back with one complete. And he will have a Titans first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the short catch and flip the down marker back to one. On first down, it's Tannehill. Fights through it. Into the hands of his tight end, Jeff Swain. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Working with a second and four. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. From the gun, here's Tannehill. Oh, he's looking for a touchdown deep for Woods. And this is intercepted, but they'll say out of bounds. Oh, very close to a turnover there in the end zone. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. Well, I was watching him in warm-ups, and he hit a 62-yarder that hit the crossbar and went over this one a little bit inside of that, but not enough leg. And the difference is what? Well, game. your live conditions, live right? Live conditions, game conditions are a whole lot different than practice, where you just pop it up there, no rush, no pressure. I think maybe that takes a couple yards away from you when you have to do it when it's real. And Fournette with a first down carry as he works his way forward for a nice pickup of about six. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. From the 45 on second down, Brady. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Coming up on three minutes left in the half in a 3-3 ball game. Just a pair of field goals to this point. A handoff to Fournette. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, 
Seven yards on first down. That fits the bill. Second down and three. Fakes the give to Fournette. Now Brady. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, when you've got a tight end who can run, you've got to give him a shot to unlock the defense. Want to see what they can get. Taking the big shot downfield. That one winds up incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Brady now to throw. And break. The tight end's got it. And he's going to have the Fox first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short. Blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. First down, Brady. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And this is incomplete. Oh, he had six points right in his hands, but could not hang on. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and ten. Again, they'll throw with Brady. That's complete, Bernard. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first one. This from 44 yards out now. Suckup's kick is good. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. So they're trading first half field goals. Going to break through on the touchdown front in a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. So all field goals so far, 6-3 our score as the kick is away. Taken in at the three. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. The Titan offense now working their way back onto the field. Now they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? Three yards the game there, second down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Now Tannehill saying, let's get to the line. 
to throw on second down is Tannehill. Open man, Westbrook Akine. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. That catch good for five. It's third down. This is caught. It's Woods. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Again, Tannehill. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Here's second and ten. Tannehill. And his throw is incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Out of the gun, Tannehill. Flush to his right. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the red zone now, Tannehill. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. Second and 10. To throw is Tannehill. And he's got the hook up here. It's Woods. Five yards. Now it's third and five. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really Shut well. Down. Shut down. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Back to throw, Tannehill. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. A great effort there as the first half is winding down. And the Titans are going to retake the lead. So that really an almost perfect drive as they chew up some clock and wind up scoring late in this first half. And remember, they've got a chance to double dip here because they're going to get the ball first to start the third quarter. So they potentially could go up two scores before the other guys get a chance to do anything. Extra point up and good by Bullock. And that will make this a four-point game. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. 
Taken in at the three. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. A one more drive here for the Buccaneer offense in this first half. And with only nine seconds remaining, with not much time, we'll see how they play this. Nine seconds to play, likely the final snap of the first half as it's first and ten. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. So we reach halftime here with the visiting Titans taking the lead into intermission. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Titans hold the lead, and they'll get the football first as the third quarter gets underway. And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll start with a give to Henry. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They'll run it again with Henry. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. The Bucs with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. Tannehill now to throw. And that's complete to Westbrook Akine. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Tannehill on first down. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Draw play. This is Henry. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked off here the 29. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. That is just what this defense was hoping for, an interception on the opening possession of this third quarter. Obviously didn't want to surrender a touchdown and fall even farther behind. And we've gotten to know this team a little bit, haven't we? Couldn't you just see their defensive leaders telling the offensive guys, telling the quarterback, don't worry, we got you to start things off. You take it from there. Fournette fighting through, and he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. to throw it's Brady and Evans calls it in touchdown Bucks. a nine yard touchdown there and the Buccaneers on just two plays have taken the lead well they had their chances in the first half you remember but had to settle for two field goals this time they come away with six I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range 
but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. On the sideline, difference of feeling between three and six. Is it astronomical or no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. The Titans now just about ready to take over. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Yeah, coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, <laughs> right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. We're going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. A shotgun handoff to Henry. Rumbling past the 30. And finally taken down at the 36-yard line. 58 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. That's a nice run right there. Able to get to the outside. And so many times defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Henry with a run on first down, but he's not going anywhere as he'll get to him a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Second and 12. Now a handoff to Henry. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yards to put themselves in a good spot on third down. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Well, instead of fourth down after the incompletion, it'll be first down roughing the passer. Coaches love their defenses to be aggressive, but they want them to be smart as well. Have to leave the quarterback alone at a certain point. A bad time for a roughing penalty, and they get the gift of a first and ten. Here's Tannehill. Open his swaim, the tight end. Then he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't it? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. On first down, Tannehill. Eluding the pressure right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. 
Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. On second down, here's Henry. Man, this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. They'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. Well, coaches stress their defense being physical. They don't just mean the big guys. How about the guys on the outside, the cornerbacks? It's not just their job to patrol the airspace. They can get involved in the run game as well. Tannehill on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. Here's Bullock now for the Titan field goal. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. Bullock's kick is good, and that's going to tie us at 13. So they've put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown, but that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. Square now at 13 all as he sends this one away. Taken in at the three. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Brady now on first down. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. From the 30 on second down, Brady. And a catch right side by Evans. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. And Caleb Farley there on the tackle. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. 13 all our score as we start quarter number four. From the 45 on second down, Brady. Got a man and he hits him in stride. 
Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Shotgun now for Brady. And Boyd has it over the middle. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. From here, it would be a 45-yard field goal attempt, certainly in range, but they'll look for more yardage on third down. On play action, now Brady. Dumps it off to Fournette. So the completion gets him just a yard, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. And Suckup will put this one right through. And they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead. But this one's still certainly a long way from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead. Right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one fielded out to five. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at the 20. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case... He had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Again, it's Henry. Fights loose. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 73 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size... This intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the gun, here's Tannehill. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Good coverage on the outside, and I think that's where he wanted to check that down to. But once he saw the danger over there, he just threw that one over everyone's head. Smart play. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. Now it's 
against Tannehill. Going up top. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Their defense got to stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. And Brady and the Buccaneers here, first and 10 at their own 21. Throwing to start the drive, Brady. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. First quarter, Charles, you really emphasized the importance of winning the turnover battle as a visiting team, as an underdog. They haven't forced a single turnover in this game. And right now they're losing, so no turnovers might lead to no victory. To throw again on second down, Brady. And he'll lose yardage here, back to the 15. It'll be a loss of six yards on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. When you lose that kind of yardage on a pass play, you often expect it to be a sack. But that wasn't the case there. They completed the pass. Probably would have been better off just dropping the football and making an incompletion as opposed to catching it and losing that kind of yardage. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Mike Evans, 85 yards. And the Bucs use the big play to extend their fourth quarter lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Extra point put through by second. His guys will take a 10 point lead. Is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. It is fielded right at the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17 yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And he'll take a shot here for Hooper downfield. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. Bust through the tackle, and he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. 84 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and 10. 
from the gun. They'll try to run it. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. The power move there couldn't buy him much space. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to Huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Tannehill's throw into the hands of Hooper. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. In this situation, the dictation is coming from the defense, right? They're going to tell you. You can have six, seven yards. Do that all the way downfield. It's just going to take the time off the clock. And you've got to start attacking vertically a lot more. Here's Tannehill. Oh, I'm not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. And I think we'll probably see him go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores. They have to try and make something good happen. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their full down. And he lost the football, and it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Following the fumble recovery, Tannehill. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, they certainly have trouble unlocking this defense through three and a half quarters. So I don't expect it to get any easier now. You know they're going to be sitting back and waiting on everything, and they force an incompletion there. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Tannehill. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll be pulled down as a penalty flag will rein in as well, and that would appear to be a face mask. So a big penalty there on the face mask leads to first and ten. Here's Tannehill. They set up the screen for Henry. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Three yards the game there, second down. Boy, that was certainly well-read defensively. And the key to any screenplay is space to work. And there was none to be found there. And they tackle him for just a short game. Tannehill to throw. Quick slant here to Woods. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Of course, remember, you need a touchdown here and a field goal. Doesn't matter the order, but they have to get it done and get it done fast. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now Tannehill. And this is caught down for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Bullock good on the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter.
So they got their touchdown. Now down a field goal. Here comes the onside kick. And the Buccaneers able to recover. Their hands team does its job. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it. But even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. They'll run on first down. Bernard. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And checking the timeouts, they do have two defensively, but no real need to use them as they're not going to be able to stop the clock after that. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Brady to throw. He finds his target. It's Evans. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Victory formation now for the Buccaneers. Down to a knee they go. take a knee here and that should just about do it listen anytime you take a knee to end a game that means you've won it so it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd isn't there <laughs> and the home crowd applauding they're happy with what they've seen chalk this one up in the left hand column for a win yeah that's right head to the locker room throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids your gloves your towels Get to share it with the home team. So fire the cannons. It's a victory here for Tampa Bay. And it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises. Really, both sides did. But they did what they needed to do at home to get the win. Yeah, they really had to grind this one out, didn't they? Because nothing came easy. Every snap was a major league brawl. They had to win at the line of scrimmage, win downfield. They got all those things accomplished. But to win a close one like this... You know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? But those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game.